Our last video discussed how E solves a set of equations and the importance of having good gas values. So now that we have an idea of what's going on behind the scenes in E's, let's talk a little bit about how we can use E's most effectively. It is often the case that a problem will involve many or maybe even many hundreds of equations, and it's not generally possible to enter hundreds of equations without making at least a few errors. Also, asking E's to solve a large set of nonlinear equations without a really good set of guess values is not going to work very well. Therefore, it's important that we have a strategy other than simply entering all the equations at once and then trying to calculate a solution. Even though E's allows equations to be entered in any order, there are some good reasons to enter the equations in a very logical order. Whenever possible, you should enter equations in a sequential manner so that intermediate solutions can be obtained after every single equation is entered, or at least after every few equations are entered. This is similar to the way that you would solve the problem by hand or using a conventional programming language. When you use a sequential solution, each new equation only uses information that was stated or t determined from preceding equations. In a large coupled set of equations, it may often be a good idea to actually enter a temporary equation that effectively provides a guess value for a variable that has yet to be calculated. This temporary equation will later be removed when additional information is entered. There are several reasons for entering equations in a sequential order. First, it allows your program to be debugged as it is being written. It is frustrating to enter a large set of equ equations and then finally hit solve only to see E's fail to converge. It will be difficult to debug a large E's program, and it's much easier to enter the equations one at a time and then verify that E's can solve the set of equations that results after each equation is entered. When problems are encountered, they can immediately be isolated to that last equation that you've entered. This method is just good engineering practice. When something goes wrong with an experiment or a device, an experienced engineer will immediately try to isolate the problem by testing each subsystem of the device alone. The other advantage of using a sequential approach is that it allows the user to easily obtain a very good set of guess values before you ask E's to solve a very large nonlinear set of equations. This is done using the update guess values command, which is illustrated in this video. Let's do an example that illustrates this approach. This is a very simple problem where we're trying to determine the temperature T of an object that is experiencing radiation heat transfer with two surfaces, one at a high temperature, TH equals 1,000 Kelvin, and the other at a low temperature, TL equals 300 Kelvin. The areas exposed to the high and low temperature surfaces are AH equals 1 meter squared and AL equals 0 0.5 meters squared, respectively. The rate of radiation heat transfer to the surface from TH is given by this equation, where sigma is the Stefan-Boltzmann constant, which is equal to 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared per Kelvin to the fourth. Note that sigma is one of many built-in constants in E's and can be accessed using sigma with a hashtag after it. The rate of radiation heat transfer from the surface to T sub L is given by this equation. The surface is at a steady state and therefore an energy balance provides the final equation that we need to solve the problem. So we first enter the known information as shown here and then we'll solve the equations that have been entered up to this point in order to assure that there are no typographical errors. We could next try to directly enter and solve the set of three equations and three unknowns represented by equations one through three. And we're doing that here. If we do this, what you're going to see is that E's does not converge even though I've made no errors in entering the equations. The error message that results directs us to view the residuals window, which will be discussed in our next video. Entering all three equations at once, simultaneously, rather than sequentially, caused this convergence problem. So let's take an alternate approach, where the equations are entered one at a time, and we solve the set of equations after each one is entered. In order to take a sequential rather than a simultaneous approach, we would like to enter equation 1 and then solve, next we'll enter equation 2 and then solve, and then finally we're going to enter equation 3 and solve. But if you look, equation 1 involves two unknowns, q dot h and t, and therefore in order to carry on, we need to enter a temporary equation that provides a guess value for one of these unknowns. In this case, we're going to provide a guess value for the unknown temperature, t. 
We know that the temperature of the surface must lie between TL and TH, and therefore a reasonable value to use is the average of these two temperatures. This equation is clearly temporary, and it must be removed eventually in order to obtain the correct solution. And you can highlight this fact by highlighting the equation in yellow, as shown here. With the temporary value of T specified, it becomes possible now to enter equation 1 and then solve the resulting set of equations, as I'm doing here. The units for the variables can be entered and checked, and the solution debugged. If I made any mistakes, I know exactly where the mistakes were made. They were made in the last equation that I entered. Equation 2 can also be entered, and again the equation set solved and debugged. Although the equations solved, the solution is not correct because we entered a guess for the unknown temperature T. However, this solution does serve a purpose. The current value of the variables Q.L, Q.H, and T are also very good guess values. They're much better than the default guess values that would otherwise be used. In order to use these as the guess values, what you should do is select the Update Guesses command from the Options menu or use the appropriate button on the Speed Button toolbar. This will cause Ease to assign the current values of all the variables to be the guess values for those values. For example, T initially had a guess value of 1 Kelvin. That's the default guess value that Ease uses for all variables. Now its guess value is going to be 650 Kelvin, which is much better. Next, delete or comment out the temporary equation the specified T and instead enter the steady state requirement that's given by equation 3. Now when you try to solve the equation set it should solve with no problems at all and the correct value of T you see here is 904.5 Kelvin. This simple example illustrates the basic method of entering equations sequentially using temporary equations as needed to supply guesses and then finally applying the update guesses command. There are other ways to make E solve difficult sets of equations. For example, one way is just to update the guess values at the start of the solution process. However, it's my opinion that taking this sequential approach puts you in the best control of the solution process and leads to the least amount of frustration.